Davos returns to Winterfell along with Jon and Daenerys. He later approaches Tyrion and Varys as they witness the arrival of the Karstark people and warns them that Daenerys will have to earn both the Northmen's and the Wildlings' as loyalty if she seeks to rule them. In order to accomplish this, Davos suggests a marriage between Jon and Daenerys, which, according to him, would bring peace and tranquility to the Seven Kingdoms. Davos then helps the preparation of the upcoming Siege of Winterfell, and serves food to the people gathered at the castle. One of them, Teela, reminds him of his beloved Shireen. As she is willing to fight despite her young age, Davos and Gilly persuade her to defend the crypt where all the non-fighting people will be gathered. Davos then attends a war council, where he is tasked with giving the signal to light the trench when the whites get close to the walls of the castle. Later, Davos goes into the castle's great hall to enjoy the warmth of the hearth, and joins a pre-battle vigil with Tyrion, Jaime Lannister, Brienne of Tarth, Tormund and Podrick Payne. He thus watches Brienne being knighted by Jaime, and later refuses Tyrion's invitation to sing, claiming his singing to be terrible. As the Battle of Winterfell is about to begin, while standing on the walls, Davos is shocked by the return of Melisandre, who he previously swore to execute if she returned in the north. However, he lets her through when she claims that he does not need to bother killing her as she will die before the dawn. During the battle, Davos gives the signal to light the trench, but remains unseen by Daenerys and her dragon. With the attempts by flaming arrows and torches being unsuccessful, the trench is finally lit by Melisandre. Despite his own admittance of lack of combat skills, Davos survives the battle against the Whites. Once the army of the dead is annihilated by Arya Stark's killing of the Night King, Davos sees Melisandre quietly leaving the castle. He grabs his sword, ready to execute her, but then watches as she discards both her cloak and necklace and quickly turns into an elderly woman who collapses and dies in the snow, her remains blown away in the wind. Davos is seen later celebrating their victory over the army of the dead with the rest of the northerners during the feast in the Winterfell Great Hall. After Daenerys says that it is time to march on King's Landing, Davos rides with Jon and the army of the north via the King's Road. After arriving outside of the city, a plan is made to attack the following morning. After Daenerys breaches the city walls with Drogon, Davos follows Jon and the Stark infantry into the city to take it. He is later seen attempting to evacuate civilians after Daenerys burns it to the ground. Davos survives the battle and falls back outside the city after Jon calls for a retreat of his forces. Jon? Davos and Tyrion walk amidst the ruins of the city after the battle. Jon and Davos try to stop the Unsullied from executing the captive Lannister soldiers, but are unsuccessful. Weeks after the assassination of Daenerys Targaryen, Davos takes part in the trial of Tyrion Lannister where he prevents a dispute between Yara Greyjoy and Arya Stark over Jon's fate spiraling out. After Tyrion suggests the Lords of Seven Kingdoms choose the new king and recommends Bran Stark's name, Davos, while unsure he can even vote, assents anyway. He is later named the Master of Ships by the new king and tasked by Tyrion, once more the hand, to repair ports and rebuild the royal fleet.